Hi. All right, I'm gonna give you guys another story. Let me get the Santa out of the way. <laughs> About, yeah, teaching and living abroad. It's, you know, the expat life. And that's kind of what this channel's about. Travels and life abroad and all that hot jazz. So, <clears throat> a few years back, I used to live in Malaysia. And I lived there for about four and a half years. Um, and I moved there when I was like in my mid, early to mid-twenties, actually. Yeah. And I was actually working like as a teacher trainer in the public schools and so on. And it was quite an interesting experience. Um, but it really wasn't me you know it wasn't really my I, I mean I was there I did it saved for the full contract term and everything um and I had some good colleagues and a good bit of friends that I still maintain friendships with but uh it was definitely one of those situations where looking back on it now I was just like man that was just Oh, Lord, child. <laughs> um, that was the best thing I could say about that. Because, all right, so first of all, the company that I was working for was a new company. And this was a project that was done with various companies throughout the country. And um, <laughs> there was a lot of teething problems. There were so many teething problems because we had such a high turnover. I mean, I came in with about 120 people. By the time I finally left, Maybe from the original 120 people, there were maybe 20 people left. All right. And we had probably gone through over 300. So it was a high turnover. Um, and God, our manager and our president and the vice president of the company both died. I think of heart attacks within like months of each other. It was such a stressful situation. And it was, it wasn't like it was a hard job. It's just that, not all, but some of the people we had to work with, um, both local and foreign alike, expats alike, made it really difficult. And um, I, if you had met me, let's say I went there 2011, yeah, 2011. If you had met me anytime prior to that, I was this like really bouncy type, hey, what's up y'all, hugs, friends, let's go, woo type person. And I'm trying to be like that again, because I was like, I feel like that is my personality, not some sort of like, ugh, type. But for like, a, I would say the good two and a half to three years of that, yeah, two and a half years, the first two and a half years of that program, living there, I felt like in such a deep hole of black darkness of nothingness that it was an abyss that I could not come out of. And maybe that was a depression. I know so many people who actually start, started to suffer from depression because of this job <laughs> and living there. Um, some people were placed out in the middle of like palm oil plantations where they were the only Western foreigners in like 50 miles in either direction. And I know what that was like because when I first came to Korea, I mean, the first year I wasn't too bad living out here in the country, but after a while, the isolation of not having someone culturally that you can relate to sort of wears on you. Um, a lot of people were placed in really strict um, Muslim towns. And I had coworkers who were told, yeah, even if you leave your house, you need to be fully covered. So for a lot of people, it was really hard to adjust to. And I was like, just, you have to think of it like, um, like Saudi Arabia in that essence is that, except instead of a desert, you're in a palm trees, <laughs> different location, but the mentality is similar. They have to abide by. So for a lot of people, it was really hard to adjust. And um, a lot of people were thinking, oh, it's Southeast Asia. It's going to be like Thailand, you know, it's going to be like beach and booze and everything everywhere. But no. Um, so that's why I, I think a reason we had a really high turnover and a lot of people just socially couldn't adapt to the different culture. Um, and as I said, it was different in different cities. But uh, some people had that experience, I, I remember hearing. And um, then, unfortunately, there, were, there was a lot of resistance to the program by some of the teachers we had to work with in the Malaysian schools. Not all, but I would say maybe... a maybe like 60%, we'd get so many 
ridiculous excuses as to why they didn't want to attend these meetings with us. And after a while, that negativity and those excuses and those lies, there were so many blatant lies that um, I pretty much caught people telling me straight to my face. After a while, it wore you down. Um, so like, someone would be like, oh, I didn't do this because I had to do yada, yada, yada. And then you speak to the principal and the principal's like, no, they didn't have to do this. They, they didn't do this. And, you know, stuff like that. Um, you pretty much call people out on or people just in one of my, my colleagues, um, people just like fell asleep and it was really, it was really disrespectful. It was a lot of disrespect after a while. And, um, so I know for a lot of people, this was an issue and it was not all the teachers that we had to work with, but there were a good majority throughout the nation. Actually, the different companies also, um, had the same issues, but yeah, that made it also really hard for us. Uh, the native teachers when we came in to teach this program that was enacted by the government. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people just they didn't want to do any of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, so for a while, it really became hard. And I just remember what I can remember. I swear, as I say, it was like a black hole. I There are some days I just, I was just like a, a robot. I just got into motion, get up, brush my face, teeth, brush my wash my face, brush my hair. Back then my hair wasn't as mop. It was straight. I used to straighten it. Um, and get dressed and go into work, do something, whatever, um, that we had practice in our professional development meetings and observe the teachers. And that was it. I really cannot recall a lot of stuff from those days of teaching. Um, and I also had to work with some of the worst people ever on my team in my county. Um, let's call this one woman Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy was from Australia. Chrissy, not real name. She lived in other countries, worked as well as an ESL teacher. Um, Chrissy couldn't drive, which was a big, like, uh, you kind of need to because we had to go to multiple schools and the distances were, like, vast. Um, so she had to hire someone to drive for her, and uh, she treated that poor guy like he was her slave, I swear. Um, <laughs> then Chrissy uh, didn't like the fact that um, Malaysia was more, I guess, more Muslim versus Indonesia, where she had lived, which was much more secular, and that, at least that area she was in. So I remember one, let's say this is a Sunday, we had a meeting over what we will do in class. It was Easter. Chrissy didn't like the fact that we had to work in Easter because it, it wasn't observed in Western Malaysia, Easter. Eastern Malaysia observed Easter, not Western Malaysia. Um, so then the following Monday when we had our meeting, Chrissy decided to do this whole like five, 10 minute rant about what was wrong with Malaysia. And I'm just like, go to the back, like in the back behind her sitting down, like, oh my God, we did not go over this. Like just think to myself, and it was just me and her, the only two foreigners in a room of like 20 Malaysians. We had Malay, Muslim, Malaysian, Tamil, Malaysians, Chinese, Malaysians, Eurasians as well. And they're all just like, wide eye, like, what the heck is going on here? Crickets. You could hear crickets. And it was so weird. So awkward. And um, the next day, <laughs> or then after she finished her spiel, I was like, okay, so... um. We're going to continue with what we were doing, our lesson from the other week. I don't even remember what it was now, but I just try to shift and get the ball rolling back to our focus, which is what our job was. And I remember telling later on this to my other manager that came in. I was just like, dude, it was weird. It was such a weird vibe. That woman was cuckoo. And I bet she heard that she almost was deported because of something else that went on in a different country. But that's a different story. Um, but anyways, Chrissy didn't last long in that job. Chrissy was the, you think of the word dumb blonde, that was Chrissy. She went up to, we'll call her Karen, our manager, who was really vindictive that I had. Ooh. Anyway, she went up to Karen, who had several, Karen was from LA, so she had like, you know, Botox and fake boobs and everything. Um, and she goes to Karen and goes, oh my God, are those your real boobs? And we're like... Why would you say, what the hell, woman? 
she just she she was like in her mid 40s she had like a teenage son with her i felt so sorry for that poor kid but this woman was just whack job galore um complete i don't know that she got through life by just trying to smooch people over and being like I don't know, an airhead. And people, I guess, took pity on her. I don't know. But working with her was so miserable, so depressing. And I had to do it for like two and a half months working with her. So anyway, she was, and she eventually like quit and left. And she did a midnight run. And I never heard from her again until this whole thing when she left. And they said she was making other people feel miserable. <laughs> and they tried to deport her from some from the country she went to. Um, but Karen took that out on me because Christy was the second person. I also had Bert. <laughs> before as a manager a supervisor i should say and bert also had like a follow with chrissy with within two months of me being there and i'm just like this is my fourth or fifth month in the country now and i've had to go through two supervisors who both had issues with our manager so karen later on bert left also midnight run karen then yells at me like you should be telling us what was that i was like a woman i'm trying to avoid these people this drama and just do my own thing okay and um Karen eventually leaves like the following year, takes all our materials with us that we had worked like over a year on. Before that, though, she screwed us a lot of us over in our bonuses. Um, so for a while after Chrissy left, I was doing the work for like two or three weeks, almost a month on my own without other teammates <laughs> because each team had three people. Um, and yeah, it was just me. We hadn't hired a third person yet. And um it was, it was tough, and I was doing a lot more extra work, helping the new people when they came in as well, the new teammates. But yeah, people who did less in other cities throughout the our county, they got they got more than I did in my bonus. I always remember that. So I was like, mm, okay then. But yeah, so no me gusta Karen, nor Chrissy. Bert, was that his name? Was? <laughs> yeah, Bert, I didn't mind. Actually, one of my friends who I was, I befriended on this project, a couple of months ago, she actually said, hey, I met Bert, Bert in like Cambodia and he remembers you. Um, so yeah, so hi, Bert, wherever you are in the world. Um, so yeah, so that was pretty cray cray, right? Uh, oh, then it was also a fella. Always gotta be a fella, just making your brain go Woo, cuckoo for cuckoo puffs. And that's when I learned in terms of gaslighting and emotional manipulation when I had to deal with this guy who was totally immature. So glad I never had to see him anymore, but he really put me through the ringer. So I guess dealing with that, dealing with um, the terrible call co-workers and then dealing with people, the native teachers who the majority of them didn't want to be with this program who treated me like crap. It was really a lot of like a lot of pettiness that was going on because I was younger. I didn't have kids. I had a life that I can just go up and go wherever I wanted to. And so there was a lot of this petty jealousness, jealousy I felt as well. Um, so yeah, so I had to deal with that on top of it. The kids were no problem. The kids were sweethearts, but just unfortunately they were, you know, a lot of the times and I'd say, hey, to this teacher, um, let's say teacher... Zuri, let's do this with this class. And she'd be like, okay, we'll do this. And then the next day she goes back to doing whatever the heck she was doing before that was totally not appropriate for teaching students. And it, it affect, I feel like, you know, I didn't do a good enough service to the students because I think, you know, they were the ones who really suffered. Um, but yeah, so it, it was insane. Um, I stuck it out, though, for four and a half years, pretty much. Um... It was in different cities as well and met people, great people, as well as weird people <laughs> along the way. Um, and I think it really helped me grow because I learned what I will and will not tolerate anymore from whether they be from professional or romantic relationships or just any type of relationship in general. So yeah, so that was like my interesting life in Malaysia story. <laughs> Brief recap. Um, but yeah, that, uh, I haven't really ever spoken to people about that. Um, but when I meet people who were also in this program, even though they were, were, were with different companies and I'd be like, do you, was it like this for you? And we just share all of our horror stories and we're like, no one will know what it was like unless you've actually <laughs> experienced it. And my company wasn't, they try their best with 
the crap they were dealt with. Um, and it wasn't just them. Like They also had to deal with the other companies who also had to deal with the government. And the government were really dragging their feet on a lot of things. I knew people were there for like almost two years whose workers' visa... I don't know how they ever even got their workers' visa process in time because it was really a lot of bureaucratic nonsense that we had to deal with as well. So yeah, that was life in working in Malaysia and probably why when people are like, oh, they're going to holiday in Malaysia, I'm just like, eh, been there, done that. <laughs> a beautiful country. I'm not going to lie. It's a beautiful country, beautiful, rich history, especially if you go to Malacca. Um, I loved Malacca a lot. But unfortunately, I guess this program wasn't in correctly planned out and there were a lot of hiccups, a lot of problems, um, and a lot of disrespect, I say, from both local and foreign teachers alike. Um, but, you know, as I said, I made some great friends along the way, and I'm happy for that. Um, a few of them I still keep in touch with, and uh, any of them, no, none of them are here, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was just an interesting thing. I didn't meet one teacher who was here, and she went. She was at a different company, but um, we we met up here in Korea, and we we shared our battle wound stories. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, that's a little bit of a life in Malaysia as a teacher that I did in my life there. Um, yeah, Malaysia. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. If you want more stories, like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.